oh my god we are going to talk about uh, such a confusing period with so many authors and it was a period of great turmoil the jacobian period the period that came after shakespeare and elizabethan period the reign of james the 6th of scotland guys you already know james the 1st of scotland he was the chaucerian poet king who wrote rhyme royal remember this is james the 6th of scotland stuart dynasty this is people did not like it you know what james the 6th of scotland was a son of mary queen of scots the enemy of queen elizabeth remember mary queen of scots duessa in fairy queen i have already made a video on it i you must have watched it duessa the enemy of yuna that story we said in that video remember yes so james the 6th of scotland was an unpopular king king james did a lot of good things for example he started a new bible which came to be called king james bible or authorized version of the bible it is the miracle of english prose but still people did not like him before that itself there was a gunpowder plot 1605 a plan to kill the king it didn't work out and james was interested in witchcraft he was afraid that witches are going to kill him it is to please james that shakespeare wrote macbeth are shakespeare wrote all his major plays in the jacobian period but still shakespeare is remembered as an elizabethan writer i have said this before in another video i hope you remember why is shakespeare still called an elizabethan writer because shakespeare's sensibility is elizabethan in shakespeare there is divine providence good people are rewarded bad people are punished and many of the elizabethan writers continue to write in the jacobian period such as were shakespeare francis bacon john dun they were all elizabethan writers but they wrote in the jacobian period you already know about them i have already covered them in previous videos i have this plan guys i will ask you some things or refer to some things from previous videos so that there will be amazing revision for us you won't forget you know i call this back stitch technique when you stitch you go forward like this and then you come backwards stitch again so that it will be strong like that we'll do in the videos what do you say I think it will help you a lot. Back stitch technique. So I was saying that Elizabethan writers continue to write in the Jacobian period. What are the major plays of Ben Jonson written in the Jacobian period? Walpurgis or the Fox, Epicene or the Silent Woman, Bartholomew Fair, Alchemist. Remember? And John Donne's major plays, especially the Holy Sonnets. were written in this period batter my heart death be not proud and then what was the jacobian period like what were the features of jacobian drama jacobian period was a time of great unrest not only political unrest but also intellectual doubt skepticism and this reflected in jacobian drama jacobian drama or post shakespearean drama was not brilliant like elizabethan drama jacobian drama was mostly set in metropolitan city of london showing corruption the major genres were city comedy tragic comedy and revenge tragedies all are very disturbing genres city comedies were about the criminal lower classes of london london is a major setting of jacobian drama which was also a major setting of restoration drama we will talk about that in a later video so jacobian drama shows political and social unrest corruption politics decadence 
political intrigue you know many uh, people cheating others common theme in jacobian drama the many jacobian plays are sensational sex tragedies and political intrigues and there is a lot of artificiality and spectacle in jacobian drama you don't believe what this won't happen deliberate artificiality employed in jacobian drama modernists like t s eliot loved jacobian drama for this reason because there is a lot of darkness and ambiguity like in modernism in jacobian drama there is a lot of dark ambiguous elements as so as i told you in the genres of city comedy tragic comedy and revenge tragedies city comedies are about lower classes corruption of the lower classes tragic comedies are very disturbing plays tragedy comedy all very disturbing with objectionable characters also revenge tragedies of blood of obviously are very disturbing <laughs> this is not like the benevolent romantic tragedies and romantic comedies of shakespeare in shakespeare there is such a wonderful climate good people rewarded bad people punished and love triumphs at the end revenge is taken all ends happily <laughs> not not at all in jacobian drama you will know when i tell you about the jacobian dramatists for example take the oldest of them all george chapman george chapman was a contemporary of shakespeare you might know that he is shakespeare's rival poet shakespeare was jealous of george chapman he writes about chapman in the sonnets without mentioning the name of course an early comedy of chapman is the blind beggar of alexandria it was modeled on tamburlaine actually the protagonist cleanthes is modeled on tamburlaine and he was inspired by commedia dell'arte tradition if you watch shakespeare's video you will remember what is commedia dell'arte from italy a bawdy street theater remember and guys he wrote a lot of horrible historical tragedies Bussy Dumboys, the Revenge of Bussy Dumboys, the tragedy of Charles, Duke of Byron, and this is not what he is famous for. What is he famous for? Chapman's translations of Homer, made famous by John Keats' sonnets on first looking into Chapman's Homer. Chapman translated Homer, Iliad and Odyssey, in a very violent, bloody manner. and chapman has written another comedy that is very famous eastward ho what is that eastward ho is a sailor's call in that comedy he is talking about a city goldsmith and his two daughters they are in love with two apprentices or apprentices eastward ho is a unique play because it was written by chapman johnson and marston <gasps> Johnson and Marston you already know they were enemies Johnson and Marston were enemies Johnson fought against Marston and Decker in war of the theaters but they made up they became friends by writing eastward ho did you like that so that is George Chapman the next important playwright that we are going to talk about can you guess I will give you a clue he is a playwright who wrote over 220 plays <gasps> don't worry not individually many of them were collaborations a man who wrote over 220 plays many of these were domestic tragedies it is thomas haywood hello don't mistake him with john haywood that's another man john haywood wrote interludes remember I've talked about them already. Interludes, the four P's. This is Thomas Haywood, the author of A Woman Killed with Kindness. That is the story of a wife seduced by her husband's friend. Then he wrote another play, The English Traveller. That is a completely different story. I'm telling you, it is about a woman seduced by her lover's friend. <laughs> same story 
All these sex tragedies, almost the same story. Woman is seduced by somebody. She repents, either she dies or she is forgiven. So much sexual intrigue and cheating. I am telling you one thing, Ben Johnson's plays and these Jacobian plays, they have something in common with restoration comedies because they are also cheating. Thomas Haywood wrote about the lower classes in London, the apprentices. A famous play he wrote is The Four Apprentices of London. You will think, oh my God, Thomas Haywood wrote 220 plays, ma'am. Should we read all these plays? Are they all important? No, don't worry. Just some plays like these are important. Read extra about them, however. Pursue your own research along with these videos, okay? And now we are going into the next playwright. The next playwright is Thomas Decker. Thomas Decker is famous for the Shoemaker's Holiday, 1599 play. At about the same time, he also wrote The Old Fortunatus. The Old Fortunatus has a funny story. Fortune is giving an inexhaustible purse to the protagonist. And is he using it properly? No. The Shoemaker's Holiday is very famous. It's a city comedy. A man is dressing up as a shoemaker to gain access to his girlfriend. Raoul and Lacey and Rose. This play has a very famous character, Simon Iyer. Simon Iyer is a, an eccentric shoemaker who becomes the Lord Mayor of London. <laughs> the shoemaker's holiday has a subtitle, The Gentle Craft. It is actually taken from another writer, Thomas Delaunay. Shoemaker's Holiday, you should read extra on, okay, because it's very famous. And then, Decker has written many tragedies. Remember, this is a uh, Jacobian period. Sensational tragedies. Lus Dominion, The Witch of Edmonton, etc. His comedies include The Honest Whore, the Roaring Girl, you know, all about lower classes of London. Decker's pamphlets are also very important. You must have heard of Satyromastics. Then there is another famous pamphlet, The Bellman of London. The Bellman of London is a pamphlet you should read extra on. I'm sure this will be there in some exam very soon. And then there is Lanthorn and Candlelight. Have you taken down? Please note down all these names. Decker and Marston were together in fighting against Ben Johnson. Both of them satirized Ben Johnson. Marston, John Marston, is remembered for his play The Malcontent, which has a very cynical hero who is a Duke in disguise called Melavali. He is helping his own usurper. That is Marston's malcontent. Marston worked with Admiral's men. Remember Admiral's men? We have already talked about it. Christopher Marlowe. Philip Henslow was an important figure in Admiral's men. When Decker wrote Satyromastics, Marston wrote Histriomastics. He has also written other plays like Jack Drum's Entertainment. What you will, what you will is also the subtitle of Twelfth Night. Marston also attacked uh, Johnson as I told you. Don't worry, Johnson attacked Marston as well. So that is the war of the theatres. Then if you talk about other Jacobian dramatists or post Shakespearean dramatists, you have to think of Cyril Turner. Cyril Turner is the author of The Atheist Tragedy or The Revenger's Tragedy. We don't know whether exactly it is Cyril Turner or Middleton who wrote it. Who wrote um, uh, Atheist Tragedy, we don't know. Sorry, Revenger's Tragedy, we don't know. It is probably Turner or Middleton. So, Turner probably wrote Revenger's Tragedy. He also wrote Atheist Tragedy. 
And then there is a very major playwright, John Webster. John Webster was a favorite of T.S. Eliot. John Webster was the author of The White Devil and The Duchess of Malfi. The White Devil is the story of a, actually a real woman. The protagonist's name is Vittoria Corombona. She's pretending to be very white or innocent, but she's actually a devil, a woman a villain. Vittoria Corombona is encouraged by her own Machiavellian brother Flaminio to fall in love with Bracciano. Vittoria and Bracciano kill their respective husband and wife. Hmm. And finally, revenge is taken upon them. The White Devil is a story of a villainous woman, but the Duchess of Malfi is actually a victim. The Duchess of Malfi, we don't know her name. She falls in, she's a widow at the beginning. She falls in love with her steward Antonio. And her brothers take revenge on her. They send Bosola to spy on her. Bosola kills her. Her brothers don't like her marrying Antonio. Her brothers are Ferdinand and the Cardinal. Ferdinand is her twin brother. The Cardinal has a mistress, Julia. The Cardinal, in a famous mime scene, gives up his ceremonial headdress and becomes a soldier to fight against the Duchess and Antonio. And he, with a poisoned Bible, he kills Julia, his mistress. Do you know what happens? Basola kills the Duchess. The Duchess dies bravely. And then Basola becomes the Avenger. The murderer becomes the Avenger. He turns against Ferdinand and Cardinal. But you know, God himself punishes Ferdinand. He goes mad with lycanthropia. Lycanthropia is the feeling, the madness that you get when you feel like you have become a wolf. In the West, all these things happen because there are legends of werewolf. Oh my God, Duchess of Malfi is a, is a very ambivalent text. It is not a proper revenge tragedy. The victim is a woman. She dies before she can take revenge. The Avenger becomes, so the Avenger is actually the murderer. Complete confusion, isn't it? So that is John Webster, a very important playwright. Next, we have to talk about two playwrights who are very familiar to all of us, Bowman and Fletcher. Together, they wrote over 50 plays, I'm telling you. Independently, also, they wrote plays. Together, they wrote Philaster or Love Lies a Bleeding, a tragic comedy. Another tragic comedy by Bowman and Fletcher is The King and No King. Guys, today itself read a little bit extra. What is Philaster about? What is the story? Make your own notes. Remember tragic comedy? Our Sydney was against it. I told you in Sydney video. And then Shakespeare and others wrote it and it became a respectable genre. The Definition of tragic comedy actually comes from Fletcher's Faithful Shepherdess. There he says that a tragic comedy is neither tragedy nor comedy. It should not be so full of bloodshed and horrible things. It should not be completely tragedy. It should not be so happy. It should not be completely comedy. That is what tragic comedy is. Fletcher defines it. So Bowman and Fletcher wrote Philaster and the king and no king. Both are tragic comedies. The maid's tragedy is their horrible tragedy. <laughs> and Bowman alone wrote a city comedy called The Night of the Burning Pestle. It's a very funny play. Actually a very uh, modern play. It breaks the fourth wall. It has meta theatrical elements. Amazing play it is. So will you read about Bowman and Fletcher? Very important playwrights of the Jacobian period. Now we talk about another major playwright, Thomas Middleton. See, Thomas Middleton is very important in 
the 20th century. There are references to Middletons. Women beware women, tragedy. And a game at chess, comedy in the wasteland. Thomas Middleton worked for Admiral's men. Philip Henslow, remember? And he wrote a city comedy which is very famous. A chaste maid at Cheapside, which is the story of Maul Yellowhammer, <laughs> lower class woman. And then Middleton wrote the comedy A Game at Chess, which gave the wasteland the title of its section, A Game of Chess. Chess is used as a metaphor here. You know, chess the black king, white king, etc. are characters. And in the induction to a game at chess, the very famous man Ignatius Loyola, who established the Jesuit order, he appears in the form of a ghost. Women beware women is a famous story. Bianca is seduced by the Medici prince. In the seduction scene, her own mother-in-law is playing chess outside the bedroom. That is the scene alluded to in the wasteland. Middleton is also remembered for another famous tragedy that he wrote along with William Rowley. That is the changeling. Beatrice Joanna is the protagonist. She loves Alcimiro. And she is betrothed to Alonso. De Flores loves her. Oh my God. Wait, 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 wait. You are saying, who are the lovers? Once again, I am telling you, don't worry. Beatrice Joanna loves Alcimiro. She is loved by Alonso. And betrothed to Alonso. De Flores loves her. Beatrice Joanna uses De Flores to kill her. Fiancé Alonso so that she can marry Alcimiro. What a plot, Hannah. Huh? What happens is she becomes the mistress of De Flores. De Flores uses her as a mistress. At the end, she dies repentant. Remember T.S. Eliot's play Geronchian? After some days, we'll talk about that also in another video. Geronchian is a play, sorry, poem. Where lines, the dying lines of Beatrice Joanna from women beware, women, sorry, the changeling, they are quoted. Beatrice Joanna, heroine of changeling, her dying words are quoted by Eliot in Geronchian. Will you remember? Guys, are you thinking, oh my God, so many plays, so many things she said, how will I remember? Don't worry now. Nah. Write down everything. Watch the video again if you can. Short videos these are. Easy to remember. Read extra. There are a couple more playwrights I will just mention. Philip Massinger who wrote A New Way to Pay Old Debts. Very important protagonist. Sir Giles Overreach. John Ford wrote Tis a pity she is a whore. Tis pity she is a whore. That is also a very major play. And then James Shirley wrote The Cardinal. These are some of the last Jacobian playwrights. I did mention a lot of names, but I explained them clearly. All these are important. Take your time, read, get ready. Are you watching YouTube shots, guys? I am asking questions based on all these videos there. So, this is like a comprehensive feast, Hannah. Right? So, we will have questions. We will have explanations. There is also your own research. And in our 10 p.m. live, which I'm sure you're following, we have extensive discussions of questions on all these topics. You are going to have an amazing career very soon. Watch out for the next video. Until then, bye-bye.